FCOA lesson 5A, the coach training. At FCOA we say, what you learn today, be ready to teach it tomorrow. Often we ask the help of second timers to buddy up with first timers. Getting into coach mode will make you a better buddy, a better communicator and a more all-round group member. It's a confidence builder that adds to safety. That's why we prioritize the development of a coachman mindset from day one. So that you and your buddy can take turns between practicing skills and coaching. If it's your turn to coach, then most of all emphasize everything that looks good. And then add an observation or two about something that can get optimized. Don't be too serious, keep it fun, have a laugh. Your most used phrase should be, that was a great effort, or you're making great progress. When participants are disappointed by themselves, then tell them, don't expect miracles, it takes time. You don't need to be a master to help a student discover the survival float. They just need a patient friend that occasionally holds their hand, a person that encourages them without pressure or expectation, a person that makes their session fun, safe and productive. Under supervision of your lead coach, you're going to help people feel good about being underwater. Also, you will prepare to teach a small three-minute topic that fits your skills and confidence level. It's normal to feel some stage fright. This usually disappears after the first time you participate in teaching. We will now address five coaching topics. One, the three-part roleplay. Two, monkey see, monkey do. Three, group pressure. Four, trauma management. And five, information saturation. The three-part roleplay. When we prepare you for your three-minute teaching topic, we do so through a three-part roleplay. The first part is a demonstration. A lead coach will show you how to teach a certain skill, like for example, mask fitting. This is how I teach mask fitting. Without strap, place the mask on your face, make sure there is no hair in between, suck in through the nose and listen for air leaks. The second part of the three part role play is the copy. You will deliver a copy of the demonstration. You'll act as a coach and the lead coach will act as an ideal student. Like this, you can get used to telling the story. If you forget parts, the lead coach will remind you by asking typical student questions to keep you on track. Error catching. In the third part of the three-part role play, you again will act as a coach. But this time, the lead coach will make con mistakes and you have to try and catch those errors. Build yourself a mental database of common mistakes so that after a while you can predict and anticipate on the things participants are about to do wrong. The three-part roleplay practice comes back again and again every time you prepare yourself to teach something new. You first get yourself ready through roleplay and only then you're ready to teach. Now there might be days that there's no one available to help you prepare. In that case, the FCOA instruction videos can get used as the demonstration. Then when you're ready to copy, record it on your phone. If the recording doesn't sound good, then it won't sound any better in real life. So just keep doing it over and over until your teaching sounds like a solid story. By the time it looks good on video, it will be good in front of participants also. If you feel you forget certain parts of your briefing, then write down some bullet points. Bullet points are meant to bring back little stories that already are stored in your brain. Monkey see, monkey do. The way we teach is very visual. 
participants are more likely to copy what you do than to listen to what you say. So make sure your movements are slow, clear and easy to follow. Demand participants to copy your actions so that they build muscle memory, so that they get used to the moves and so that you have direct feedback that you're understood and that your teaching is effective. This strategy can also bridge language barriers. Once we are in the water, we will continue with this copying system so that we don't need to talk and explain things excessively. Group pressure. People act very different in groups than when they are alone. A non-swimmer might feel pressured to join his group of swimming friends. Therefore, he will be nervous and likely to panic. For this reason, we like to teach with at least two coaches. One for shallow practice and one for deep water practice. The other side of the spectrum is a sporty person who wants to prove that he can dive deeper and longer than others. That's a very healthy competitive attitude, but on the first dives we have to protect his ears. As a coach you could stay below the participant and look in his face. If they struggle with equalizing it will show. Then stop them from going down and remind them of their equalizing options. Another way to have no worry about participants ears is to tie the first dive line in only two meters of water and focus on duration. Two meter depth is deep enough to experience the sensation of pressure and to practice equalization, but it's not likely to cause any injury if the participants go down without equalizing. Traumatized participants. Most of our participants are non-swimmers and many of them have little traumas about being in the sea. A common story is that someone they trusted pushed them under or they nearly drowned and no one helped. When a participant comes to you and confesses that they signed up for this class but now they have second thoughts, what they need to hear is you can stay in shallow water as long as you want. The shallow area has also got lots of things to see and many skills can get practiced. We can't erase bad memories. The only way to make traumatic memories less significant is by creating happy memories to offset them. At the moment this participant has only one memory and it's horrible. Now after a dive with us they have a second memory, this time a good one. And now slowly the traumatic memory starts becoming less powerful. So it clearly is our highest priority that the participant has a great time. It is not important if they complete the skills. Skills can be done later or next time. When those non-swimmers come to us, they are heroes. Their family and friends have told them that the sea is dangerous and that going in the sea is an unnecessary risk. And yet, they are here. We need to applaud them for being here and trying. If a traumatized person learns to breathe through a snorkel, then that on its own is a huge achievement. The full glass of wine. In this metaphor, the glass is the brain and the wine is the information that we coaches are pouring into it. Participants have different capacities to absorb information and you as a coach have to learn to see when they are saturated and full. Because there is no student in the world that will ever dare to say, sorry teacher please stop talking my brain is full. Therefore, it's up to the coach to notice that the participant has zoned out already and you just got to stop talking. They are full, they can't absorb more information, they need time to digest. Signs of people being full is that their eye contact towards you reduces. They might start yawning or they start checking their phones. They might start agreeing with everything you say without taking in a single word. 
During a lecture, the attention span of students is about 15 minutes. They will remember the most from the first five minutes. And it's downhill from there. So make sure that the most important information gets revealed in the first five minutes. Beginning coaches often have a tendency to talk too much. Set a time limit for yourself. Use minimum words and maximum action. Use the monkey see, monkey do strategy whenever you can. In order for students to copy your actions, your moves should be demonstration style. Slow, clear and exaggerated. In water coaching, FCOA recommends to teach and practice in shallow water until divers have mastered the survival float challenge and the 200 meter no equipment swim. We also recommend to teach with several coaches to spread the workload. Be honest to your students about your experience and capabilities. Teach well within your comfort zone. Don't sacrifice your own practice to serve your students. Once in rotation, all divers get their turn to dive and you should not skip yours. Students learn by watching more experienced divers doing their thing. Simulating emergencies regularly. It's a good habit to fake an emergency on every second dive of the session or randomly at any time you feel your safety buddy is not 100% focused. A real emergency would also happen at random. Trust has to get earned. The only way to really build trust between divers is by practicing emergencies over and over until the response becomes automatic or second nature. Compilation of common mistakes. We will now show a compilation of common mistakes for a coach to notice either in yourself or in your students. The next lesson, 5B, is about medic first aid. It's another important topic not to be delayed.